Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just really excited. I mean, we're, we're blessed to be able to be here, and we're all ready to rock and roll on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, we're it, it's an exciting time because you just get to see how the world and women in sports have been able to develop. I mean, Title IX is something that gave, gave us all an opportunity to be able to play and do sports that we love. And so for us to be playing right now in college during the 50th anniversary, it's like, wow, look at the progress that we've made over time. Yeah, I definitely do see it um, because, I mean, I feel like we're making people have to, like, be proud and accept women's sports because we're putting on a show every night that we step on the floor or the court, no matter what sport it is, it's like we're impressing people, and so they really have no choice but to accept what we have going on. Just consistency. Um, we've all played a lot, a lot more games since we've um, last seen each other, but I think it's just making sure that we stick to playing Gamecock women's basketball and doing what we need to do and really understanding Scout. I mean, I just think, I think I've been doing um, the same thing all year, just being consistent. I'm just going to make sure that I'm dominant coming into this game on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, it means a lot because it just shows how representation matters. Like, I feel like we can say that and we can look at representation for older women um, in society, but also representation as this is a young girl in the Virgin Islands who I didn't know had a school project, but still was able to look up to me. And so it just means a lot, but it also just shows me why I need to continue to work as hard as I do to just make other people proud, especially people back at home. No, but I did comment on her mom's Facebook, and so I think we were going to see if I could meet her when I go back home in the summer. I think we've just um, worked a lot better together. We've started to mesh a lot more, and um, I just think we've been consistent. We've just continued to move the ball. We're understanding where people need to be, and um, what plays were working and when looking at UConn, I mean, they just continue to move the ball. They're aggressive and that's what they do. Yeah, I mean, it's a great environment. I mean, you think about people on social media and they always have something to say about women's basketball. Oh, nobody watches. Oh, nobody really cares. But, I mean, 18,000 people last night for March Madness was amazing. And when looking at the little girls in the stands, it's like, wow, like we are really um, helping young girls because, I mean, we were in those stands. I remember being in the stands watching the Final Four games. And so to be playing and girls coming up to me after the game asking me to sign something or take a picture, it's like we're really making an impact and women's basketball is definitely something that's going to just continue to grow. The biggest challenge? I mean, I just think they're a good team and they're probably going to come out with – um, different game plans and different strategies, and so just making sure that we're able to adjust as the game goes on. Um, their post players um, have a lot of length, um, but I think being able to play against length all throughout the season is definitely going to help me, but just understanding that they're long, and so I just got to make sure I'm, I'm focusing on that. No, you're welcome.
questions here for Leah Boston? You're welcome. For Leah Boston? Yeah. Obviously, you played UConn. Put a perspective on where you guys have come, where they have come. Yeah. I think both as looking at both teams, I think we've both grown um, offensively and defensively. Um, we played them early on into the season, and we've had a lot of practice um, on both sides of the floor. So I think it's going to be a pretty fun game tomorrow. I mean, I don't, I don't know. People in uh, in the crowds might be like they were probably hoping for this game, but I mean, we we're just we we're just praying to make sure that we're in a national championship. We've been working hard for um, throughout the season, all the entire time for this game on Sunday, and so for us to be here, we're just ready to work. One thing about UConn that sticks out. I mean, I would just say um, how they move the ball. I think they know where everybody is, and that's pretty good. I mean, we it's we're gonna attack it the same way we've been attacking it all season. I mean, we've played teams that um, have great offensive. They almost have similar offenses um, to UConn, and we know that they have different ways that they could come at you. And so it's just really understanding personnel and knowing what they want to do. And part of it goes into knowing their plays, knowing their sets. You're able to recognize it um, as they're starting. And so just making sure that we're able to zone in on those and have a lot of communication on the floor. We should be pretty good. Yeah, um, it was after COVID, um, right before um, the season, and I went to Texas to work out, and we we just had a good time. It was pretty fun. He helped me with some new things, and yeah. Yes. I mean, he just showed me some different moves, um, just working a lot on just repetition and getting my shots up and different post moves. Um, and just working on reading the defense. How well did you know him? Um, I like I knew of him, and we spoke once or once or twice, but and but we really got to know each other while on the trip. I think Tim Duncan is is a man of. I mean, I'm not there yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. And is he going to be following the Yeah, he's been following the games. Yeah, he has been. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think I think my agent Jay does a great job of that. Um, coming into the season when we knew NIL is going to be passed, Coach Daly said, "I want you guys to be able to get your opportunities, but make sure that you know you basically keep the main thing the main thing." And the main thing has been winning a national championship. So when it comes to this around this time too, especially of March Madness, my agent already made it known that I'm 100% going to be focused on um, these games. And so anything that has to do came before or it's going to come after. But right now, this time is just for making sure that I'm focused on these games. I think it's more excitement, not really nerves, just because this is what we've worked for all season. Now it's here. So there's no reason to change up what we've been doing or all how we've been feeling going into any game. Of course. Yeah, I definitely think that comes with just being able to read the defense and seeing and understanding when I need to score. Sometimes 
Um, if I think, you know, let me just go see if I can attack the basket, see if I can get somebody in foul trouble. I definitely think a lot of that's have grown throughout this entire tournament, definitely with maturity and just knowing when I need to be able to attack the basket or when I need to just go for a rebound and let my other teammates shoot. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to leave that up to the people in, like, the crowd and what they think. But, I mean, coming into this game, I'm not really looking at it as Aaliyah versus Paige. It's South Carolina women's basketball versus UConn and just making sure that we're playing a team game. Um, I mean, we've played in a lot of great gyms with a lot of against a lot of great teams, and so we know there's going to be a great crowd, and we know our Gamecock women's basketball fans are definitely going to be there cheering us on. But no matter how many people are in the crowd, and no matter the noise that they make, they're not the ones on the floor. And so, just making sure that we keep into locking into what's happening within our circle is definitely going to be beneficial for us. Did you see any of the yes. Who do you think had more fans against the or South Carolina? Oh, it was tight, but I know our. I know our Gamecock fans came through. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think there's definitely um, great respect from both sides. I think both coaches have done an amazing job developing their programs. Um, I think a lot of people see that in the development of South Carolina and just UConn and their consistency. Um, People know that it's going to be a great game, and they know that they have two talented coaches going head-to-head, -head, and so I bet they're just super excited to watch. The intangibles, I mean, everything. I mean, just going for hustle plays, making sure that we're giving one more effort because, you know, a national championship is on the line. And we're two teams coming to compete, and we want to win. So just making sure that we do every single thing because, I mean, this is the last game of the season for both teams. So we want to be the ones on top. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited. I think this is, I'm like super excited. I mean, coming in freshman year, got cut short. Uh, last year, final four ending didn't, wasn't the way we wanted it to. But now looking at this third year, we have a chance at a national championship. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to give it everything I got. No, I don't think so. Because I feel like when you start looking at it as a, oh, I'm playing South Carolina, I'm playing UConn, I'm playing Stanford. I feel like you just need to focus on I'm playing for a national championship to make sure that you stay level-headed because people, you can get overwhelmed whether you want to believe it or not. You can get overwhelmed if you're thinking, oh, I'm playing, I'm playing UConn, I'm playing against this, this, this. It's like that's you don't want to overwhelm yourself. So it's like, no, we're playing the national championship game tomorrow, and so I'm just excited for that. I mean, it, it matters just because we've, we've both gotten a sense of each other, but at the same time, we've also played a whole lot of games since the Bahamas, and so we just have to look at what each team is doing and how they're playing each other and just making sure that we understand what's happening on the floor. Oh, maybe like once a year I get back. Usually it's after, it's after the season. Um, I'm able to go back home for a little bit. <laughs> yep, yep, and my hair color it gives it away automatic. And, and do you know if they're having like any uh, particular watch parties there the game and watching TV? I would assume so. They're usually tweet, um, posting about it on Facebook that there's going to be watch parties, but I don't know. I know I asked you about Tim Johnson. When, how old were you when you first met him and what's Oh, I don't remember how old I was when I first met him, but he came down to St. Thomas because there was like an all star game happening and I was able to watch and then meet him after the game. I don't know. No, I was older than that. I don't know. Sure, 15. Yes, this is my first time. And I, I mean, I love it. This is my type of weather because I enjoy being, I enjoy, I'd rather be cold than hot. And so I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's nice.
Yeah, um, I repeat, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Um, because I feel like in this world, no matter what's happening, there might be people who are not against you, even if who are against you, even if they're in your face saying congratulations. And so just making sure that I pray that over myself, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I mean, it just keeps me calm because I know that God is protecting me and he's camping his angels around me every single day, no matter what I'm doing. I mean, it's ex it's exciting. I mean, 50th year of Title IX, and we're playing a national championship game. It just shows how much times time has passed and how we've been able to develop women in sports, not just basketball, but overall. I mean, having a sold-out crowd here from March Madness is like, wow. Who would have thought if women were not even given the opportunity to be able to play? I mean, we wouldn't even... We wouldn't even be here right now. We wouldn't even be talking. And so I'm just excited to see um, everything that's happened. And I'm excited for the future to see how much more it's going to grow. Honestly, I think everything. I, I really think everything. I think just being able to do a lot of different things on the floor is just exciting. If I'm able to just make that one more pass and they hit a three, like, I mean, that's three more points on the scoreboard and somebody else is getting theirs. And so it's like, I, I like doing everything. You said it yourself. Hey, it's March Madness. Um, I mean, playing them in November was pretty nice. I mean, I think that gave us both a feel for each other. But we've played a lot of games since then. And just coming into this, it's like, hey, it's March Madness. Just like you said, everybody's coming to play every night. And so, and this is the last game of the season. So just making sure that we come in focused, not really worried about what happened in the past because that's not the same game that we're about to play tomorrow. I mean, it would it would mean a lot, but it's not what would it mean to beat UConn and win national championships. It's for me, it's more of what would it be to what would it be like to win a national championship? How'd you feel? And so that's really my goal. It's like I want to win a national championship. I came to South Carolina to bring national championships back home to Columbia, and so that's the goal tomorrow night. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been keeping it fun all year. Um, we've tried to just stay relaxed and poised no matter what game we're going into just because that's, that's when we know we play our best. We're not tense. We're not focused too much on one particular thing. And we're just keeping it fun and understanding that we're playing for each other and we're playing for everybody um, who supported us this entire time. And so we're just locked in and ready for that. I definitely think having a strong fan base, especially that travels to Minnesota to watch us play, is exciting, and we love them for it. And we definitely feed off their energy. They they keep the crowd loud. You hear them. If they think the ref made a good call, you hear it. If they think they made a bad call, you also hear it. But we also understand that none of those people in the stands are going to be able to win this national championship game for us. And so just making sure that we stay locked into what's going on in our circle and what's happening on the court is definitely what we need to do tomorrow. Question back there. <laughs> yeah, um, it was Coach Daly. Um, after we played Buffalo the night in the Bahamas, Coach Daly was like, you're not being dominant. This is not the Aaliyah Boston that um, we're expecting, we're looking for. And it kind of just flipped a switch, and I'm glad she was able to say something because it really got me upset because I was like, I'm doing fine. Like, I'm playing good like that's what's happening in my head but um she was able to point it out in the next game I mean I just came out and I was like you know what like I'm not going to be denied like I'm going to go crash the boards I'm going to do what my team needs me to do and I mean it's helped us out every single game and so I'm just going to continue to do that for one more
Absolutely. I, I mean, I remember right after the game, she was like, you're not being dominant. This is not this is not what we expect. This is not what we need. We need you to step up. And I was like, okay. I was, I was very upset. And she knows that. But it definitely worked out. And I'm so glad she said something because if she didn't, who knows what would I have been thinking. I mean, her biggest message has just been to continue to be consistent. I mean, she said it all year, and she's not going to change up anything because it's this game. She knows that we need to be locked in, and she knows that we are. We're just going to make sure that we're understanding what UConn is going to do offensively and defensively, making sure that we key into different options that they might have and just making sure we're ready for tomorrow. I mean, we're just going to need to continue to play the way we've been playing, making sure that we're executing on offense, making sure that our defensive intensity is up because, I mean, it's been working for us this entire tournament and all season long. And so just making sure that we're continuing to do that and making it hard for them. Yeah, um, I mean, thinking about Paige being player of the year last year and me being player of the year this year, I mean, that's not that's not really the focus. The focus I is just winning a national championship. And if I was to tell you our defensive plans, I would get in trouble. So you're going to have to wait till tomorrow. Yeah, I think I think we've grown as a team and we've understand um, what how to play with each other. We understand what everyone likes to do. And I think we've gotten just uh, we've just gelled a lot more. Our offensive execution has continued to grow and our defensive intensity, I mean, has definitely stepped up a whole notch since we've played them in the Bahamas. So just make sure that we keep all those things in the forefront of our minds going into this game. It'll keep us ready. Of course. Yeah, you, you said it. The reason we came to South Carolina is to bring home national championships back to university. And coming in, thinking about our freshman class, I mean, I think we were just a special class, and we had a special team our freshman year, and we and we have a special team again this year. So just being here, the even national championship game, I mean, it's exciting. I, I mean, I have chills right now. You can't see because I have my, my hoodie on. But um, it's exciting because this is what we want to do. We want to be able to compete and contend for a national championship, and for us to be able to do it, Tonight, I mean, we're blessed. God has definitely guided us and kept us through it, our freshman, sophomore, and junior year now, and just so excited for the opportunities. Hi. Yeah, I mean, you say people try to make the game go faster, make quicker decisions, but I, I slow it down. I think I think being able to read the defense, I mean, I'm, I slow it down so I'm able to read the defense. I mean, sometimes people still try to speed me up, but I mean, I don't know how to describe my brain. I don't want to sound like I'm super cocky or anything, but I mean, there are just so many pieces that move at the same time in a game, and it's really hard to understand. Like, I, for me, I can remember every single play that happens in a game, no matter good or bad, and sometimes it's sad because I, I can't ever forget what happens in a game, but when I catch the ball, I already know if somebody's open on the weak side, and sometimes it might take me a little bit longer to pass the ball out because I'm trying to see if the defense will split and I can get opportunity to go and score but I mean I I see it all and sometimes speeding it up is like oh let's just get the ball out of her hands but I I still see all what's happening and so it's a lot of thinking that goes through my head but it all happens at the same time that makes it all just 
one level and one motion. So I try to slow it down so I'm able to get a better understanding and really see what's happening to see if all the things twitching in here is correct. But that's just really what I try to do. Yeah, I think about that when I watch the WNBA games because I'm like, oh, they, I mean, they can't even double her because, I mean, she's just going to kick a weak side or people really, people really accept their defense and they say, well, I can guard her. I can, I can do this. And so I really, I, when I watch it, I'm like, okay, well, I think I'll just go baseline here because she's obviously playing high side or, or this and that. And so I'm, I'm able to understand how some of these other teams play already and how people play defense. And it's like, all right, well, I'm already excited for it. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely think that's so important. For me, I mean, people say it all the time that representation matters, but being a person of color, it really does matter. And to see that it's somebody of color um, talking about inequities and everything that's happening in the world, I think it's important because it's, it, it might be easy for a white person or someone else to be able to speak about what they think is happening and what's, what's um, inequity to them, but in reality, you still don't know what it's like being a person of color. And so for Coach Staley, especially having the platform that she has and, you know, being my coach, I mean, it's just special to see because it's like... I mean, this, I see this woman every day and she's not afraid to use her voice and she's not afraid to be who she is, which just continues to give me a boost because I know that I have a platform and if I think something is wrong or if I think something's not happening, then I should be able to speak up on it. And it's crazy because coming into college, I didn't really have a big platform. And I always thought that if you have a big platform, you probably should not be the one speaking because people are going to have their opinions. Oh, well, you shouldn't do this. You don't need to be talking. I mean, people did a coach daily the entire season last year. I mean... We, we chose, we made personal decisions not to stand for the anthem last year. That's what we did as a team. And everybody on social media had something to say. They were like, well, why don't you stick to sports? Why are y'all worried about politics? Why are y'all doing this? And that never really shied Coach Staley away from saying anything. And I think that's something that you can take into life in general because not everything's going to go your way always. And not even sports related, just everything in life. And so being able to speak up and use your voice, especially being a person of color where people might not, oh, we don't really need to hear that. We're going to listen to someone else. It's like you need to have your ground. And sorry if that went too deep, but I just really wanted to get that off. Okay. <laughs> One more question. Yeah, um, well, I hope you guys know Henny's definitely number two on the team with dancing. I definitely say I'm number one for sure. But, I mean, Henny brings the energy. I mean, she's she's always funny. She's always laughing. Um, on the court, you know, she's different bursts of speed. She controls the game, controls the tempo, gets us in direction. Um, she's a great leader on and off the court. Um, Zaya, I mean, Zaya's a comedian. I don't know if, if you heard that anywhere else, but Zaya is really a comedian. Um, she's always, the mood's always light around her. And on the court, you know that she's, we can depend on on her and knock down a shot to um, be deliberate and attack the basket. And Brie Beal on the court, I mean, she makes everybody's lives hard. And we love that for her. Off the court, she's she's really funny. Um, I mean, she just brings different personalities. Sometimes she'll hit you with some great sarcasm. <clears throat> and other times she was, she's able to be serious. Like, she really understands when to do what. And I think that that's just really great. But together on the court, they're a deadly combination. And they work really well together. And they're really understanding where each other needs to be and what needs to happen. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs>